be afraid that our words are just words and they're not translating into change. That's a real fear. That's the fear of the Sahaba. They didn't walk around claiming that they're true believers. Umar radiallahu anhu is nervous that he's a munafiq. He's nervous to death that he's a munafiq. Umar radiallahu <laughs> anhu. How can we be safe? We can't. So this final thing, I, I, I leave you with this inshaAllah ta'ala, that this hypocritical attitude, it's manifested itself in different ways. One of the ways it's, it's manifested itself is, let's compromise the teachings of Islam, let's pre present a watered down version of Islam, and present ourselves as the champions of the enlightened, reformed Islam, right? And we are so courageous because we're standing up for this deformed version of Islam. And we're the actual torch bearers, we're the, we're the champions of this religion. So what you're actually doing is compromising this deen, but what you're presenting yourselves as is what? Heroes of it. And another great hypocritical scam that's, that's infested this ummah. First you start by saying, I believe the Qur'an, but these scholars, they were ultra-orthodox, narrow-minded. We need to have a broader vision. So first you knock on the scholars. When you're done with the scholars, you say, some of these Sahaba, I don't know, they're not messengers, right? We don't have to follow them. Then you take the next step and you say, well, these Sahaba, they're the ones who transmitted hadith. So we, sh we shouldn't really trust the hadith, we can only trust what? The Qur'an. The Qur'an. And you're not really saying we should follow the Qur'an because the Qur'an is authentic, everything else is inauthentic. The real agenda is because the Qur'an has injunctions that are given precise shape and form in the Sunnah. Right? The Qur'an has general injunctions that are given their precise form in the Sunnah, like the prayer. Prayer is an outlined piece by piece in the Qur'an. It is outlined in the Sunnah. Right? But you don't want to pray. What's the easiest thing you could do? You could say, you people don't even, you don't have the open mind enough. You're following hadith? Oh my God, you people are backwards. We just follow Qur'an. What that, what that is, is one of the ultimate scams of hypocrisy. It's a scam. It's all it is. It has no intellectual foundation. It takes a second grader to, to, to convince someone who says the hadith can be trusted, Qur'an can be trusted. If you say one of them can't be trusted, you're saying none of it can be trusted, by the way. The people who transmitted the Qur'an are the same people who transmitted the hadith. And if you say they can't be trusted with hadith, then automatically they can be trusted with Qur'an? No, 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 no. Either you believe or you don't believe. Pick your sides. It's that simple. It's really that simple. So I wanted to conclude with this in our class just to give you some perspective. I pray that Allah enhances you in your knowledge of tajweed. I pray that He enhances you in your memorization of Qur'an. I pray that He enhances you in your knowledge of Qur'an. I pray He enhances you in your love of the Qur'an, in khushu'ah, in your prayers, and that He inspires our children, all of our children, all of our families, all of our elders, with a love of reciting this book, of implementing this book, of learning from this book, of doing dhikr from this book, and to have a relationship with this book, much like the relationship the companions of the Messenger, radiallahu anhu ajma'in wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to have. If we can have that, inshaAllah ta'ala, there will be a different, this, this will be a different community. This will be a different community. May Allah Azza wa forgive our shortcomings, and especially mine, because I run my mouth a lot. And I tend to say obnoxious things, and if I offended any of you, I'm truly sorry. I really am very, very honored at the opportunity to have, to, to just have the opportunity to serve you in this community. And I, I pray that you really enjoyed yourself. I certainly did. I really did. And I've been looking forward to teaching in Houston for a long time, so this is actually a dua come true for me. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, you know, the last thing I want to say to all of you is, if uh, you can, at the end of this month, I haven't, we haven't confirmed it, we're trying to, we haven't confirmed it, at the end of this month, um, I'll try and send one of my colleagues half of this.